What is up guys, it's Elite here with another video and this video is going to be pretty cool. I'm going to be showing you guys how to add 3D objects into your videos. Now, for my next video, I want to go over you guys' videos. So, if you send me your videos on Instagram, I can review them in my next video and even add my own edits to them to show how I would edit it. But anyways, let's get into this video. Now, I already went over a 3D tracking tutorial, so this is only going to be for still footage and you can combine this with my 3D tracking tutorial in Blender to kind of add uh, 3D objects to your moving footage. So I have an image here. This is not the original size of the image. Uh, the, image is by, uh, the, the image is this size by default. I don't know why my phone takes pictures like that. Uh, I don't know how to fix it, but whatever. Uh, so I'm just going to scale it up and I'm going to save the image at this size. So when I import it to Blender, there is not going to be any uh, issues. So I'm just going to save it uh, in my Blender textures folder and name it uh, desk image. All right. So now that I've done that, I can head over to Blender. And what you're going to want to do is uh, go to your scene and you can press the tilde key and press one to go to your camera or, or you can press zero to go to your camera but I don't have uh, I only have a mini keyboard so I don't have the zero key so you're gonna click on your camera here and then go down to this green camera and enable background images right here and drop down click on add an image and you're gonna open up the image that you just saved or if you already have your image um, the correct size, like I didn't have it the correct size as you saw, but if you already have it the correct size and you don't even have to do the Premiere Pro step, you can just import it directly from where you downloaded it. So I'm going to go to Blender, Textures, and I believe I named it Desk something. Uh, desk image, yeah. So now my image is the background of my camera and I'm just gonna go down here uh, to opacity and turn it all the way up all right and then now what I'm gonna do is press N go to view right here click on uh, camera to view which basically locks the camera to the view so if I move my camera then uh, the view or it doesn't uh, Crap, I don't know how to say it. All right, look, I'm just going to show you what it does if I don't do it, right? So if I uncheck it, this is what happens, right? But if I go back to the camera and I check it, you don't leave the camera. The camera stays there. So what I'm going to do here is line up the grid axis. Uh, I'm going to line up the grid with my desk. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. And... It's pretty lined up right right here right about here it's lined up and I'm gonna uncheck this so I don't mess it up so now you'll see if I add an object here like let's just say I add a cube here right it's gonna be pretty much lined up with my desk like it actually it could actually be on my desk so uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna Go get a 3D object. Uh, I'm gonna get a object of a gun because uh, I'm gonna get a gun because I know this girl that likes gangsters. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna send her a picture of this, and then she's gonna think that I'm a gangster. All right. Uh, I already have it downloaded, so I'm just gonna import it. Uh, file import and whatever file format you downloaded it as that's the file format that you pick so I have an OBJ file uh, so I'm going to get the file uh, where is it at all right blender 3d models shotgun source um oh wait all right don't forget to extract uh your file because i just had it in the zip file still so i'm going to import my 
file blender 3d models shotgun source obj bam so we have our shotgun in here and right up here at the top of the screen the top right uh, you have different modes you have wireframe uh, i don't know what these are called but i just know this one is called wireframe but basically this one lets you see the textures it's not really, all right there we go so let's see the texture uh, as you can see this doesn't have any texture so if your thing doesn't have textures automatically and there was textures uh with the file that you downloaded what you're going to do is go to like click on it first and then go to shading and then shift click on shift a sorry uh search for image texture and then link it right here to the base color or you can just link it here to the surface and then click on open and then get the texture uh, of the the texture that was included with the image uh, so that was the texture that I got and there you see it you have the texture now what we're gonna do I'm just gonna rotate this and make it oops all right if you press shift plus spacebar after clicking on it you can like select rotate move scale transform all that stuff so I'm just gonna rotate it this way and make sure that it's on uh, the grid and another way that, that you can do that is by pressing the tilde key and then uh, pressing front view or right view or left and that way you can make sure it's like on it and i think i'm actually going to flip the gun because it would make more sense that way so that the flat surface is going to be aligned with the red axis all right so now that we've done that, we can go back to camera view and we can move the gun wherever we like. Bruh, bruh, bruh. All right, I think I want it like, I'm actually gonna rotate it this way to make more room. Um. I'm going to scale it down a little bit and scale it up a little bit. And if I press this here, we can actually, no, I'm not going to do that. All right. So I think the gun is exactly where I want it to be. Now, there's a couple more things that we should be doing here, right? So. If we want to get a like to see how it look in the final render, uh, we're gonna render it in cycles, by the way, because cycles has a uh, realistic lighting. So we're just gonna go click on this thing right here, uh, the scene tab, and then go to render engine and change it to cycles. And I'm actually gonna change the device to GPU uh, just because GPU renders better on my computer. Uh, I'm going to change it back to EV. Uh, EV is a fast render, it's a real time render, but it's lower quality. I'm going to add a plane by pressing Shift A and then going to mesh plane. Scale it up by pressing S and dragging. And I'm going to change this to a shadow catcher. So basically, uh, the shadow from this is going to be on here, but the object is not going to be visible. So you guys will see what I mean. So I'm going to change it back to cycles and then. This right here, uh, go to visibility. Uh, oh wait, no, I have to go here. Go to visibility, then shadow catcher. And if we go here, go to film, transparent, we'll be able to see the shadow here, but not the grid. So that's a pretty cool thing. And we also have to get the lighting right. So in order to do that, we have to go to shading where it says object here, change it to world and change the color to black uh, so that we have, we don't want any lights really. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, we don't want any lights. Actually, we have to change the strength to zero. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to recreate the lights. So I have a uh, orange yellow light like over here in my room and I have um, the light from the monitor right here. So what I'm going to do to recreate that is first I'm going to go back to the EV renderer so I can render it faster and I'm going to add a new plane. I'm going to rotate it for my monitor, uh, scale it up a little bit, press shift, spacebar, scale, and then bam, because my monitor is like, monitor is kind of like that, and then I'm just going to match it with the monitor. That's kind of like how my monitor is. Uh, and I did just realize something. We shouldn't be doing that with a plane. We should be using a light. Uh, my bad. So I'm just going to go to light uh, area. I'm going to click on it. Drag it up. Rotate it. Like we did with the monitor thing. And... I'm just going to do this and do this and we should have a light coming from here. Um, honestly, I don't think that light's going to affect anything that much. Do -do 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 -do. I'm actually going to turn up the brightness. Uh, that's too much, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's try 1,000. All right, let me try 300. Oh, 300, not 3,000. And let me go back to cycles. Right, I think that should be fine for now. And plus, I'm going to add another light that's pretty much like over here, which is just a it's like an orange light uh it should be like about here and the color of it is going to be something like that that's pretty much it and then i'm going to go back to this view right here and change the power to 1000 uh 5000 uh, honestly Dude, I don't even know. Like, you just have to mess around with it. Because it just... You can't really ever... Um... Yeah. I'm actually going to add a plane here. Just to test it out. See how far the light is actually going. So it does seem to be going pretty far. Okay. Um, but I think this is our final results. I think, I think, I think. Wait a second. We have another light. Hold on, we have another light somewhere. That's interfering. Ah, this light, we have to delete it. <laughs> I was really getting confused and I don't know. Uh, I'm going to change this to one, wait, 1000. Hmm. Five hundred, bruh. All right, and the moral of the story is just mess around with uh, different 
brightnesses and stuff until it kind of matches real life and oh yeah basically we have a 3d object in our scene and we can render this by going right here to the render section and choosing a location to render this and bam and i'm gonna render it as render as a jpeg no i'm gonna render it as a png uh, color depth 16 suddenly everything else same um and yeah that's pretty much it well actually no that's not it because we're gonna have to do one more thing and we should change this to RGBA. It has to be transparent because the background is not going to render. Uh, so I'm going to render the image. And it's going to render just like that. But what we can do with that is go to our file. Um, yeah, I, I have no idea where it is. I'm just like, bruv, bruv, man. Um, I've said, um, a lot throughout this whole video. I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> Someone help me. Under attack on desk. All right, so it should be tiled tack on desk. Huh, that's really weird. Oh, that's because you have to save it. I don't know why it's like that. It's pretty weird. Uh, so I'm just gonna go uh, here, blender, renders, tack on desk. All right, so now, It should be here. Yep, it is right here. And. <clears throat> oh, yeah, so about that. Oh, I think the. Uh, something just happened with the scale. So you, you can just scale the image down. Uh, that's probably something that I did, but uh, there you go. You have a 3D object in your scene. And if you combine this with my motion tracking uh, tutorial, then you can get pretty cool results. So thank you everyone for watching. Remember, DM me on Instagram with your clips and stuff, and I'll review them for my next video. I'll see you guys later.